ecological issues, they affect us all. And so, tonight on Second Nature, we'll be recycling some old nature footage. And Greetings, prisoners of gravity. This is Commander Rick. For four years now, I've made my home in this cramped, claustrophobic, increasingly stuffy hellhole. All so I can bring you the best in speculative fiction and comic books and talk with award-winning authors, award-winning artists, and award-winning directors. Now some might ask, gee, Commander Rick, don't you deserve an award for all your work in science fiction or, or comics or TV or, or, exactly, Nancy. But I say no, no, awards are for others, not me. And so I thought, let's talk about awards and what they mean. Nancy, roll our opening credits that we worked so hard on and obviously no one cares about. Rising anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe has voted the English only sign. 40,000 tons of Armed with PCBs blew up the ozone layer today. Chris, in addition to winning the 1990 Campbell Award for Best New Writer, you've also been nominated for the Hugo and the Nebula. How important are awards to a writer? The nebulas are important because they're recognition from your own peers that you have done good work and unusual works will often be, more difficult works will be recognized often by the nebulas because they are an achievement in writing that writers can say, my God, this is wonderful. You know, this, I, this is a very difficult thing to do. I can't believe you pulled it off. Where an average reader may not notice and shouldn't notice the craft involved. Um, the Hugo's very important because it's a recognition from the readership. It's a way of the readership to say to the writer, you've done a good job, you know, thank you for all that you've done. I do think readers go and they look, especially for that Hugo Award, because it is given by other readers and they know that a book that has won a Hugo Award is going to be a good read. It's going to be something that they're going to like. The Hugos, named after Hugo Gernsback, the founder, publisher, and editor of Amazing Stories, are science fiction's People's Choice Awards. The Nebulas are more like the Oscars, judged by your peers. But there are other awards. A small jury picks the Philip K. Dick Award for the best SF novel of the year. The World Fantasy Awards are pretty self-explanatory. The Auroras are Canada's version of the Hugos. Nancy, what is the Australian version of the Hugo again? The Sheepdag or the Ditmar? Yeah, Ditmar. It always sounds like a miracle fabric, doesn't it? Ditmar. A few SF writers have won Edgar Awards, which are handed out by the Mystery Writers of America. Did I miss any, Nancy? Oh, right. Yeah, some of these are trophies. And some include prize money. And of course, science fiction has won its share of Oscars and Emmys, mostly for special effects. Thank you, Nancy. Anyway, I've been asking authors about the importance of winning awards. In the 60s and early 70s, you won a Hugo and four Nebulas. I mean, you just cleaned up. <laughs> what kind of impact did all of those trophies have on your career? Well, it gave me a, a certain kind of, of notice and people sort of beginning to look for the next Delaney. It was very nice and very, very warming sort of thing to happen. Uh, it, it was a little strange because on the one hand, I was very young when this happened. I, I think the first award, um, I was all of 24 when I got the first Nebula for uh, best science fiction novel of the year. And so there was a kind of, there was a sense that I had suddenly, you know, erupted full-blown into the science fiction world. But um, actually, I had done my first novel and published it. Um, well, I'd written it when I was 19, and it came out when I was 20. So I'd really had about four years. Over, and over that four years, I'd written some six novels. Um, so it didn't seem all that sudden to me. Although now on the uh, saner side of uh, 50, and I look back on it, uh, it does begin to look a little bit more sudden, <laughs> after all. Awards help get, get you noticed. It's what you do with that notice that, that determines whether or not you're going to be a commercial success in the writing business. A long time ago, Charlton Heston once told me that uh, I, and we were talking about this sort of thing. And, you know, 
He said, didn't the becoming a great, a, a really well-known actor, a big star, is, is to a great extent a matter of luck. But if you are not, every actor gets at least one lucky break. And if you're not ready to take advantage of it, and if you're not prepared to do that, then sayonara. And I think that's, that's kind of here. It was, it was a break. It got me noticed. And fortunately, I did something with the notice. Even the most prestigious of the awards, which is the Hugo for Best Novel of the Year, and I am very proud of being the first non-American to win that award, even that doesn't transform your career instantly. I mean, it's not like having a Hollywood sale or something at the top of the bestseller list for six weeks. What it does do, I think, is improve your long-term sales because to be able to put Hugo Award winner on the cover of a book means that, faced with a choice between two equally interesting unknown works, the prospective purchaser will probably pick up the one by someone who's, as it were, uh, proved his form. Publishers publish books the way the Indians planted corn. They throw a whole bunch out there and they don't much care which little one comes up. Now, when you get an award, that is the equivalent of having a little green shoot come up out of the ground. They say, ah, oh, we'll water that one. It, it's just a sign, a promising sign that, that you are somehow different from the other little kernels of corn. And that's what happened. I won the Edgar for Bimbos at the Death Sun. And that led to my getting contracts for other books and to, led to my first hardcover. Were you surprised that you won for that book as opposed to any of your earlier mysteries? Times were changing. I thought my first three were very good. And they're, they're social satires in the sort of Jane Austen vein. And I thought they were really well done. And I mentioned this to someone who had been for years in the Mystery Writers of America. And she said, it's a lovely book. It won't even be nominated. And I said, why not? And she said, oh, my dear, the same man has chaired that committee for the past 10 years. And that's not the kind of book he likes. And she was quite right. But by the time bimbos came along, there had been something of a palace revolution. And people who were new, and more women and more people from outside New York, began to demand to have places on committees. And so different kinds of books began to get considered. When the Forever War won the Hugo, the Nebula, and the Dittmar, what effect did that have on your career? Well, it made me. Uh... I guess there is this sort of premature success syndrome that a lot of writers go through. Uh, you start to believe what reviewers say about you, and that's not good. But I don't think it lasted too long with me. I realized that there were political aspects to all of those awards that had nothing to do with their literary value. For the Nebula, I was up against Samuel R. Delaney's Dahlgren which is a fantastic book. I was also against what Joanna Russell's The Female Man, a good book which had a big political following and a big political uh, resistance, too. So I essentially won by default. A lot of the people who would have voted for Delaney voted for Russ because it was a strongly feminist book. And a lot of people who didn't want to vote for either of them for political reasons voted for me because I had a book they'd read. And because, you know, war books are interesting. I don't kid myself about it. Uh, it had no uh, immediate effect on my writing. But then I was, I was writing some pseudonymous spy novels at the time just to keep groceries coming in. But then I uh, put a novel up for auction. And it went for the largest amount that any novel in science fiction had ever gotten. And that was probably because I got the awards.